Uh, Casper? Here. <clears throat> Chase? Here. Zini? Here. Doyle? Frickman? Wow. He's here. Yep. <laughs> I see he's here. Gustafson? Here. Hanscom? Here. Katowski? Here. Marley? Marshall? Here. Martin? Here. Massett? Here. McDermott? Here. Melendez? Here. Miller Miller? Here. Mm, Miller Miller. Miller Miller. <laughs> Merritt? Here. Monahan? Here. Newsom? Newsom? I know he's here. here. Um, Oliver? Present. Pasqualini? Perry? Hmm. Powers? Here. Quinn? She's here. Richards? Here. Rogers? Here. Stanford? Here. Streeter Irma? Here. Streeter James? Here. Strode? Here. Wagner? Here. Washington? Here. Wells? Here. Whitehouse? Here. Whitney? Here. And Evan? Here. Yeah, 32. Um, oh, I can't see. We have 32 at, at 7.02. So we have a quorum, and I see Representative yep, Quinn. I, I already knocked her in. Okay. So uh, if we could stand and have a moment of silence, that would be great. Representative Gustafson, would you lead us in the pledge, please? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So I'm going to call this meeting to order. This is the first meeting of our annual uh, budget meeting. Uh, and uh, this is going to be one long meeting that spans uh, several days. So at the end of this uh, meeting, we will not adjourn. We will recess. And shall I read that res resolution? So this is the resolution setting the RTM annual meeting date on the FYE 2019 town budget, whereas section 9.3.1 of the Groton Town Charter requires that the town council determine the date for the annual budget meeting of the representative town meeting, now therefore be it resolved that the annual budget meeting of the representative town meeting will be held on Monday, April 30th, 2018 at 7 p.m. at the Groton Senior Center at uh, 102 Newtown Road, Groton, Connecticut. So uh, this uh, referral is involving uh, the town council setting the annual budget meeting for the RTM. And we're gonna start off with citizens petitions. Uh, and I'm just gonna say this portion of the RTM agenda is where the uh, RTM welcomes comments from citizens pertaining to the 2019 budget. And I'll limit time, uh, since we only have one signed up, I'm gonna uh, limit it to 10 minutes two. max. Two. Oh, what? Two. Oh, two. Uh, I, I'm going to limit that time to, to 10, 10 minutes maximum, actually five minutes maximum. Um, presentation should be limited to matters pertinent to our FY 2019 Groton Town budget. Uh, and um, the moderator, myself, or members through the moderator shall ask questions only in order to clarify the speaker's presentation. Responses may be given by the moderator and or the town manager. Citizens should make their presentations from the lectern and state their name and address for the record. So we have um, hmm, Patrice Granitowski as our first speaker. Welcome, Mayor Granitowski. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Moderator. Patrice Granitowski, 30 North Prospect Street, Groton, Connecticut. I just wanted to, first of all, say thank you to all of you. Um, you have a big job in front of you. This is your main job as RTM members, so I know you will take care and consideration, um, vote your conscience, and um, know that we appreciate your service, and just thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Oh, thank you. All right, uh, is there anyone else? Um, Gretchen Ciparini?
Good evening, uh, Gretchen Ciparini. Thank you. 87 Phoenix Drive. When I was growing up in Groton, we had a population of about 48,000. We had an entire town government in one building, including the police station. We had no Taj Mahal Senior Center, police station, and library, yet with the employment at EB at 24,000, we were booming with traffic jams down Long Hill Road and restaurants like the Chart Room and Bonanza with wait lines out the door. I'm giving away my age there. I'm sure many of you don't remember that or even knew it existed. We literally had double the number of businesses in Groton that we have now, yet we kept our government lean. Our citizens do not have the overwhelming stress of a one-year 4.2% property tax increase on top of an 8.7% increase a mere eight months ago for a total of 12.9% in one year that's being proposed. I'm sure this number is a Guinness Book of World Records for any town in the United States. It is irresponsible this town council and the last one to put the citizens of Groton through such stress, which is why our population is now 40,000 and guaranteed to fall farther with such reckless spending. To me, it is an embarrassment and quandary when I am speaking with investors that I'm trying to attract here. Councilor Morazic came up to me at one of the budget committee of the whole meetings and said to me, we have a revenue problem. No, we have a government that only cares about getting reelected problem and with only a vision to maintain the status quo, which we cannot afford. And listening to the voice of the same old people who come to these budget public sessions. Most residents I speak with are figuring out how to leave. I have never seen so many for sale signs on houses in my, 40, my 60 years. Budgets are determined by income, not the other way around, as Council Moravizic thinks. The only way Groton is going to come out of this crisis is to severely reduce the size of government and keep the mill rate down, then put all effort into economic development, which is not easy or quick task given the hole we have dug for ourselves. This RTM has an option right now to make the drastic cuts that we need to lay a new groundwork for our future ability to prosper or continue the charade of make-believe, which will put more people in the camp this November with a vote for the right to referendum to finally give the taxpayers of this town the control of their pocketbooks as it is in 168 towns in Connecticut. Up until now, our legislative bodies have failed us and hopefully this one does not yet, yet again. The forecast for inflation in 2018-19 nationally is about 2%. It has been lower than that for years. Where in the world is a one-year increase in property taxes of 12.9% going to get us ahead? If you are a developer, will you have the choice to invest anywhere? Why would you sink millions into a town that has a local inflation of 12.9%? which makes them think what kind of craziness the next year budget will bring. Which instability is the en enemy of economic development, and I know that very well. We should be not attempting to keep up our fund balance because right now we cannot afford it. And we should not be going to bonding for anything given our financial crisis. Groton, including the city, won an unheard of 7% increase, has an illness of compulsive spending. And for our future, we need to stop and live within our means until such day we have rebuilt our economic foundation and can then afford the Taj Mahals that were created in better days. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other uh, citizens who wish to speak? No? So I, I'm going to go uh, on to uh, receptions of communications, and I did receive one from uh, two of my um, neighbors, uh, George and Gretchen Gauthier of 166 Tyler Avenue, and I'll just uh, summarize their, their letter to me, which is, we are both very concerned about the proposed closing of the Groton Transfer Station on Wednesday and Thursday, reducing public access to only half a day opening on Friday and Saturday, and they feel it's going to cause many problems uh, at the 
transfer station, and they suggest if absolutely needing to reduce manpower hours in half that the transfer station be open from 8 to 12 or 12 to 4 on Thursday and Friday and a full 8 to 4.30 on Saturday, which will spread opportunity to access the facility over three days while still using only 16 hours of manpower time. And they also note that another alternative to help cover the cost of operations is to raise the price of the dump pass, uh, and they would gladly be uh, able to, uh, happy to pay more um, you know five or ten dollars uh, and that if that would ensure one day or one half a day extra week that would be a benefit so uh, they just note final uh, summarize at the end com compressing public access days from four to one or two is not the answer you're going to have lots of unhappy customers and constituents who uh, may just leave their brush and drunk all over Groton uh, so that's uh, that correspondence and then I also received correspondence that um, Representative Bailey uh, uh, is uh, not able to make it tonight. So, what? But, he'll be watching. but he's watching. Just know that. Um, so now we're going to have a brief budget update. If there are uh, any uh, new budget items that the uh, town manager or the superintendent have to. Good evening. I feel weird facing that way. <laughs> um, just a brief note, my, my original <coughs> budget started at uh, $128,636,398, which would, was a 6.5% uh, increase from the 2018 adjusted budget. That would have required the mill rate to go from 23.63 to 24.87, an increase of 1.24 mills, or 5.3%. Um, and as part of that, some of the reasons why that, that my budget from one year to the next was higher. A lot of it was health care, over a million and a half dollars increase in health care and OPEB. Uh, Board of Ed um, uh, costs, which were related to similar reasons. And then uh, CIPs, uh, some big CIP items this year. Um, Town Council did a great job of going through things. I would like to, by the way, mention that uh, as part of that process, you know, we had to make, I had to make some hard decisions for my budget, like the transfer station reduction and uh, cut eight positions and made numerous other changes. Uh, originally, the CIP list was at $8 million too and got that down to $3 million, um, and then it's been reduced since then. Town Council budget uh, proposed is, uh, uh, first of all, they reduced it by $2,691,948 down to uh, 125 million nine hundred forty four thousand four hundred fifty could you go a little slower sorry. I can't sorry sorry sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the uh, they reduced the town council reduced the proposed budget by over two point about two point seven million uh, which would be a budget of 125 million nine hundred forty four thousand four hundred and fifty dollars that would be a four point two percent increase over FYE 2018 so uh, originally mine was at six point five percent now it's at four point two percent um, at, as that budget stands, it would be a 0.65 mil increase from 23.63 mills this year to 24.28 mills, which is about a 2.8% increase in the mill rate. Um, they, uh, and thanks to the Board of Ed, in which uh, Dr. Grenier will talk about for uh, all their work with us on the Board of Ed budget, uh, we cut out, the Town Council cut out about 500,000 in OPEB uh, liability payments, uh, vehicle about 120,000 in vehicle reductions, and um, $243,000 in cuts to the CIP list, so uh, a lot of different cuts, and uh, they did a great job. And, um, and it, I'd like to echo the mayor's thoughts or sentiments that thank you in advance for all the work you're going to be doing, that you've been doing through committees and will be doing. So. Thank you. That's all I have. And you're not even from New York, and you can talk I, as fast you know, as I can. I've, I've been told Michiganders <laughs> talk fast, and I'm a fast-talking Michigander. So. <laughs> Thank you very not, much. No longer Michigander, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, Representative Massett? Thank you, Madam Moderator. This is um, probably for the mayor. I would like to request, I know everyone is super busy, but I would like to request that at least one counselor be present at our sessions in order to give council rationale for their figures. Thank you. Uh, Superintendent Grenier, did you have any brief thoughts on the budget? Very brief. <clears throat> the, uh, the town council uh, looked at the, the budget that the board presented, which 
which had a 2.4% uh, two, increase or, or about $1.8 million. Uh, following uh, the, the public hearing, uh, a number of the town councilors got together and we really tried to make a, a, an effort to get down to the minimum budget requirement, which is to say down to zero. Uh, zero percent increase. Uh, our budget this year is seventy-six million four sixty-eight two thirty-nine. Uh, that's what it was last year. That's what it is this year, and it's what the the, the council is recommending uh, for next year. Uh, so the the board, uh, and when when we come on the ninth, I, I think the board will be able to address a uh, li little bit more uh, clearly how they are going to go about. Uh, trying to make this uh, 1.8 million dollar reduction, it it, it, it most certainly uh, is their decision, uh, but I, I think most certainly will involve I at least the use of a fair amount of our health insurance uh, reserve. That uh, we, we got an update today that that actually is very good, uh, thank God. Uh, so we think our health insurance reserve is pretty solid, uh, and will give us a, a, the ability to. Uh, reduce our health insurance projections uh, by using uh, our reserve. Uh, but I know uh, many of the RTM members know <clears throat> four years ago that the board had $1.4 million deficit in that health insurance reserve. So we, we certainly want to avoid that. We, we, we want to be sure whatever kinds of reductions we make can, can be sustainable. But, but the board will be discussing this. Uh, Actually, they're going to hold a meeting on Monday night uh, just to uh, – the, the board a actually hasn't had a meeting where it, it was able to uh, really have a thorough discussion of how this $1.8 I, I think a number of people have seen my recommendation, uh, but that's, that's not yet the board's action. Uh, but the board, of course, is fully aware that, uh, that the minimum budget requirement is the, the number that was uh, proposed. Thank you very much. Any questions? No. All right. So we're, oh, um, Representative Bordelon. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're not doing the board budget, so no questions about that, but certainly about anything that was said. Oh, I just, oh, about what he said. I had a question about what he didn't say. Is that appropriate about the budget? <laughs> I, We're going to be discussing uh -huh. the, the board budget, oh. board of education budget on the ninth, okay. I believe. So if, you, if it's I relevant, because he was doing a broad uh, touching on the budget, I just wanted to touch on the the lead uh, water CIP. I thought he was going to that would be covering the budget. Yeah. The board the board will discuss the CIP also on the ninth. Thank you. That would be great. Any other questions? No. Um, so I, as we move into uh, you know the beginning of our budget meeting, I just wanted to say a few things. One is that Robert's rules allows for uh, you to speak on a motion for twice on each motion for a maximum of 10 minutes. And so I just want to ask you guys to be respectful because I would like to have as many people uh, voice their opinions or concerns or ask questions uh, in this process before we uh, reach the point where someone needs to like uh, call the question, which I know you guys like to do. So I'm just asking to, I don't really want to enforce 10 minutes uh, rule because I don't want to be like a scorekeeper up here and I'm going to, you know. <laughs> be more multitasking than I think I'm capable of. Um, but uh, if, if we could all uh, try to keep our, our, sh our remarks kind of succinct and brief and allow um, all of our uh, colleagues to have a say, that would be, um, I think, phenomenal. So um, with that, I would like to uh, you know, move into uh, the first uh, items, which uh, are on finance. So I'd, ask, I'd like to ask uh, Representative Washington to come up and uh, read the minutes of that committee, please. Um, the Finance Committee met on April's, Monday, April 16th at 6 o'clock at the Groton Senior Center. Um, the committee members present was Representatives Katowski, McDermott, Martin, and Casper, and myself. Uh, committee members absent was Brandon Marley, 
Also present was um, the Finance Director, Cindy Landry, Human Resource Director, Robert Zagami, Register of Voters, Kristen Venditti, did I pronounce your name right? Okay. And Paul Duart, also Mayor Patrice Granatowski, and RTM Moderator, Sima Eben. Um, a quorum was declared. The first item on the agenda was account number 1003, voter registration, which was on page 62, 62 to 64. And um, the number was $157,224. A motion to approve was made by Representative Katowski. Um, second was made by Representative Martin. Discussion, Kristen Venditti stated that the increase in budget is due to personnel services and operating costs. Expenses are increasing due to adding a state slash federal primary in August along with regular state slash federal election in November. Majority of the budget is state mandated. Representative McDermott asked the question about charter division and the budget. Mrs. Venditti responded that if RTM goes away and referendum is needed to approve budget, her budget could increase. The cost of the referendum is not budgeted. A vote in favor of $157,224. Um, Representatives Kotowski, Martin, Casper, McDermott, and Washington, there were no opposed and no abstentions. Um, the next was account number 1013, Finance Administration, pages 100 to 104. The number was $1,464,313. Motion to approve, Representative Katowski. Second, Representative McDermott. Discussion, the Finance Administration is responsible for leadership plus accounting assessment, revenue collection, and purchasing. <coughs> Director Landry explained the function of each division of the finance department. Most of the duties are required by state statute. The finance department has a lean budget. It provides a critical core service. Director Landry stated that she has put together a level service budget. The tax division spends a significant amount of time collecting delinquent taxes. Taxes account for 70% of the town revenue. Representative McDermott asked how much is owed in delinquent taxes. Director Landry responded about 2% or around two to $3 million out of $8 million. Representative Katowski stated that she heard when people do not pay taxes, it falls by the wayside, especially mobile homes. Um, Director Landry responded, after 15 years, taxes are no longer collectible. She stated that Representative Katowski was correct in stating that mobile homes are a problem. $400,000 in collected, uncollectible taxes for mobile homes. The tax division is actively trying to collect back taxes on mobile homes as well as other real estate. They're trying to get all back taxes. Mm -hmm. Representative Katowski asked about the lockbox six service and if the service provides efficiencies. Director Landry responded that it has provided some efficiencies which has allowed the staff to pursue other things. Representative Katowski was hoping that with the lockbox service there would be greater efficiency Director Landry explained to the committee how the lockbox service works. Director Landry explained also that her department had a 5% cut in 2017. She had to lay off her position. There was a distinct drop in back tax collection. She was able to eventually add another person to collect back taxes. Representative McDermott asked about the result of adding another person. Director Landry stated she budgeted for $870,000 in taxes and has received $1.3 million in taxes. Um, Representative Washington asked Director Landry to discuss the tax incentive fund. 
Director Landry stated that the TIF will impact her department because, it's, because the assessment division will have to figure out what the assessments will be in 2020. The TIF still needs to be fine-tuned. The policy and districts are in place. No developers yet. Um, vote in favor of $1,465,313. Representatives Washington, Casper, Katowski, Martin, and McDermott. Opposed, none. Abstaining, none. Account number 2120, Revaluation Fund, pages 105-107, $88,800. Motion to approve, Representative Katowski. Um, second, Representative Martin. Discussion. Director Landry explained that the department takes care of property evaluations and aerial mapping. The money in this budget is for mailing, postage, and legal funds. Whenever revaluation happens, there are always legal fees. Represent, Representative Katowski asked what is left in the budget for revaluation. Director Landry answered $14,000 left in 2017 budget, estimating $16,000 at the end of the year. Funds are contributed annually so that major fluctuations in appropriations from the general fund do not materialize in one or two years prior to the actual date of the reval, aerial mapping, and other related courses. The next revaluation will be effective October 1st, 2020. Whenever you have the evaluations, the evaluations, you always have lawsuits. Question about aerial mapping from Representative McDermott. Why do, why do we do aerial mapping so frequently? The last one was done in 2015. Director Landry stated that you do it to coincide with revals. New homes, roads, updated houses, not shown in the previous mapping, and that's why you do it whenever you do revals. GIS data is valid, $130,000 in 2020. Representative McDermott asked a question about using a drone to do aerial mapping. He stated that it was inexpensive. Director Landry will check it out. She will consult with the IT department. Representative Casper also interested in using drones for aerial mapping. Vote in favor of the $88,800. Representative McDermott, Martin, Casper, Washington, and Katowski. No opposed, no abstentions. Um, Account number 2660, Month and Code, pages 192 to 194, $21,043. Motion to approve, Representative Katowski. Motion to second, Representative McDermott. Discussion, Month and Code Association contracts with the Knowing Fire District for fire protection and taxes the residents for the course of the service, the town is doing the service of collecting the taxes. So vote in favor of the $21,043 was Representative Washington, McDermott, Katowski, Martin, and Casper. No opposed, no abstentions. Account number 4010, Groton Sewer District, page 195, 803,445, well, $803,445. Motion to approve, Representative Katowski. Motion to second, Representative McDermott. Um, the debt service fund covers long-term bonds for sewer projects for treatment plant. This account has nothing to do with the sewer use bill. The sewer use bill is part of the 2020 fund. The debt service fund pays principal and interest on sewer bonds and payments to the state of Connecticut for the clean water fund loan. Representative McDermott asked how much interest percentage are we paying on this debt? Finance Director Landry stated that we received a 2% loan from the state to update sewer plant. 
the interest percent varies based on when the loan was sold. Vote in favor of the $803,445. Representatives Katowski, Martin, Casper, Washington, McDermott, no oppose, no abstentions. The next account is 1076, the debt service, um, $5,262,328. Motion to approve, Representative Katowski. Second, Representative Casper. Discussion, this account is the principal interest payments for long-term financing for school bonds and general obligations. This is all debt. Finance Director Landry stated that when the financial advisor put estimate together for this account and when they sold the bond, it came in higher. Director Landry asked for an increase of $44,062. The new number is $5,266,790. This includes all debt, Board of Ed, general government. Road debt is for 10 years. We currently have low debt. A motion for $5,266,000. $790 moved by Representative Katowski, seconded by Representative McDermott. Voting in favor was Washington, Casper, Martin, McDermott, and Katowski. No oppose, no abstention. The next account is 1012, Human Resources. Do you want to maybe save those for when we pick those accounts oh, okay. up and we can just maybe uh, have a motion to uh, I think we did all of them. No. We didn't do town clerk? Oh. Town clerk. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> town clerk, um, $316,203. Motion to approve Representative Casper. Uh, motion to second Representative Martin. Town clerk Betsy McCausha stated that her budget is mostly employees, election, vitals and land records. There are five staff members, including herself and her department. This budget is very lean. The town clerk gives back any money not spent. There's a $20,000 increase in election line item. This is due to two upcoming primaries, a Democrat and a Republican, and a general election in November. Money is needed for explanatory tax, postage, and posting. Last year, there were 1,082 absentee ballots. The absentee process is labor intensive. The town clerk explained the absentee ballot process. Representative McDermott complimented the town clerk on how the staff interfaces with the public. Representative McDermott asked about electronic voting. Town Clerk McCausha stated that they looked at Agenda.net program, which has a module for electronic voting. According to Town Clerk McCausha, you can only do yes or no vote on the amendments. She explained that explanatory text is needed so people know what they're voting on. Representative McDermott disagreed, stating all we need is the, for the amendments was a yes or no vote. A short discussion followed. The IT department will continue to research electronic voting. Hopefully, the IT department will find a compatible program for the town to use. Representative Casper asked how many man hours spent on charter revision petition. The town clerk responded about six hours. And the town clerk's office has brought in $885,356.31 in revenue from July 1st, 2017 to April 24th, 2018. Last year, it was $932,677 in revenue because of the sale of Brantford Manor. And the town clerk expects to bring in about $1 million in revenue by the end of the fiscal year. Vote in favor of $316,203. Representatives Casper, Washington, Martin, Katowski, and McDermott. 
no opposed, no abstentions. Thank you. So if you could make a motion to vote on the, that, those, that portion of the minutes, and then we'll hear the rest of the minutes when we take those accounts. Okay. Do I have a motion to vote on the portion of the minutes that we will be going over today? Okay. Oh, any discussion? Uh, Representative Newsom. Thank you, Madam Moderator. How are we splitting this up? What? How are we splitting this up? We're well, we're, I was, I, we can hear all the minutes now if you want. No, I'm just asking the town clerk. Oh. It, usually we don't split up uh, a meeting. Well, the, if you see tonight's agenda, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven accounts, and she just she just gave a minutes on those seven accounts. In the past, we've tried to do have all the minutes from all the accounts on one night, and we found that when you went over those minutes on different nights, you for, you, you wanted to hear the minutes again. So um, we've been trying this method for a while that the accounts that are on the evening's agenda, that the, the chairman will read the minutes to account for those accounts. And that, that it's fresh in your minds when you go to discuss. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion on those minutes? No? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Looks like the motion carries. All right, so if we would like to put on the first uh, Account is uh, 10 is a uh, 1003 voter registration. Uh, that's page 62 in your books. Oh, can you please silence your phones, please? Thanks. I don't know. And in the audience or wherever you are. <laughs> you could. Would you like to make that motion that okay. from your committee? Uh, I'll make a motion for voter registration for $157,224. And we have um, the two registrar voters here with us, Kristen Mendetti and Paul Dua. Do we have a second? So it's $157,224. Oh, You don't have black. Black was used up. Is that better? I'll have to steal some from school. All right. Can you not see that number? It's the same one that's in your books. The next one I'll do in red. I think you can handle it. <laughs> All right. So is there any discussion? We have a motion. I believe it's been seconded. Is there any questions, comments? Representative Richards. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, I just looking through and see that the department originally requested more than what was put on the town manager's budget and the town council's budget as well. Would you be able to just tell us what that additional uh, expense was or why there's the difference between those numbers? Well, I know that part of that is that we had put $1,000 into our budget so that right before the elections, we can hire somebody that is well aware of what our um, office looks like and our files are and we have them go through just to make sure that they can find any cards um, that may be misfiled, misplaced. They run a list from the machine, uh, CVRS, which is the state uh, list service that we use, and then they'll check it against the cards that are in the file 
to make it more efficient on election day when we have you know 900 phone calls coming in at once and three people to answer them um, just pulling the cards is quicker he pulled that out um, because he felt that it wasn't necessarily necessary that we could do it ourselves or something I'm not sure why exactly he pulled it out um, and there was one other thing but I don't remember off the top of my head what it was do you remember There were two things. One was smaller than the thousand. There were two items that he pulled. He went out to his car. He said he might have markers in his car. That's why he left. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Representative Newsom. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Can I please trouble you to, uh, to explain the memory card program? Okay. The machines that the state provides provided for us. The machines that the state provided for us um, are run by memory cards. Those memory cards are, um, they have their own battery in them and they're very expensive. Um, we send them off to a company that the state tells us we have to send them off to. They program them for the election with every ballot. So say in the, the last election in November, there were a bunch of different districts. It was very complicated. But what that does is it puts into the machine, so when you cast your ballot, it reads it, says which ones are marked or different than what the machine sees as the, the blank ballot, and that's how it counts the votes. Was that what you were asking? Yes, thank you. So that accounts for most of that, that particular cost center for professional services, 52, 52.90, I think. Okay, the, yes, there's, there's two different memory cards or um, programming items that we do. The first one was what I had just explained and that uses memory cards. Um, the other one is for our um, Help America Vote Act machine, which is, is, was created to help anybody vote whether they had a handicap or, or not. Um, and that is actually a memory stick that we purchase. Um, the IVS company sends us the programming um, and we download it onto our memory stick. We load it into our computers. Um, the IVS systems um, that we use actually have the same type of programming in them. Um, it allows for touch screen or listening devices to help you vote. And then there's a printer attached to that now where once you put, go through the, the voting, at the end, you can print out your ballot. It looks like everybody else's ballot, except it was pre-printed by the machine after what you told them how you wish to vote. Thank you very much. All right, Representative Streeter. Thank you, moder uh, Madam Moderator. Two questions. One, there's one general election this year, a state election, and then there's two primaries. However, there's a difference of about $6,000. What accounts for that? That's question number one. And question number two, is there an election in the city this year, and do we have to support that with money in, in this budget here? Okay, so I'll answer your second question first. This year there is no election in the city that we're aware of, but if there was, it is not something that you as the town supports. It's something that the city pays for. So we are provided um, through the Secretary of State. We cover the city, we also cover the town. So we do work for the, the city for their elections, but it does not cost you guys any money for the town. And the first question was about, the uh, $6,000 difference between the one general election and the uh, two primary elections. Yep, yep. Um, I was looking for it to be specific here. Okay, so um, for the, the two primaries that we do on one day, um, in this case, they will be on the same day. So it's not completely two separate elections for the second one. However, we do have to have separate lines for people. So when they come into one polling place, there's one moderator ruling the whole place. Um, but there's a Republican line and there's a Democratic line. So we have to employ more people to cover those two. Um, 
so that's where the difference in the cost goes? Is that what you're asking? Uh, it is, but it, it seems that you have it reversed. It's costing less for those primary elections than it is for the uh, state election. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the only thing that I can say on that, um, I have a sheet where I lay it out as to who we have to employ. I know for the primary, the turnout is generally a lot less of a turnout, so we tend to hire less of the people that help out on everything, such as machine tenders, um, you know, just regular uh, election workers. Um, so that can cut the cost down. Um, Any other questions? Okay, so I was, I'm sorry, I lost it for a second. Um, so there, there's a, a paper that I fill out every year to determine how much it's gonna cost. We go over what the state mandates for number of people. Um, so that would be the same for the election and also the primary of to what's necessary. And then like I, I tried to say, we add extra people for the November election because there are state mandates that say that there's a certain amount of time people are allowed to wait in line. Um, there's, you know, people have to be watching in different places for a November election because it's more uh, occupied with people busy. Representative Whitney. Thank you, I have two questions. Uh, one I know in the, the code 5103, that's the seasonal personnel, it's up about $25,000. And uh, that raised an eyebrow uh, at that originally, but then I see that that's the additional costs are associated with the midterm elections. But my question is sort of a perspective. Uh, was there a similar increase for the last presidential election or, or the last midterm election. So that's one question. And then the other question is, um, if this budget as it is were to be cut by, say, $5,000, would that um, run us afoul of any um, state or federal regulations? Thank you. Okay, so um, cutting the budget for the actual election on the 5103 election workers, um, we do have state mandates on how many people we have to employ. We do employ extras based on other state laws that say that, like I said, the timing of how many people go through. It's kind of a guess as to um, how many people will actually show up. It depends on how um, contested the election is. And based on the fact that this election is going to have the governor in it and it's going to be a new governor, um, we think that it's gonna be a lot more people wanting to get out and state their opinion, especially in the economic times that we're having. Um, so I think that if we were to cut the people out of working the election, I think that would be a detriment to the people and also could very easily make the state angry and, and fine the town. So, so thank you. That, that answered one question. It was very helpful. Uh, I was just wondering what the increase of the budget was, say, around for the FYE 2016 when there's a presidential election. Okay, yes, the presidential election, um, like I said that I, I do a, a sheet saying how many people we need to have and we count out how much each election should potentially cost us. Um, the presidential election ended up costing us, I think, almost $40,000 based on the turnout, the number of ballots we had to buy, um, the extra people we had to have working it, um, and any other things associated because that was such a high um, interest in that election. Representative, are there, is there anyone else who'd like to speak uh, before I start on seconds? I just want to reiterate your question now that the, uh, okay. the town Representative Richards. <laughs> oh. I don't, I don't have my list of individual cuts here. However, we didn't do anything that we didn't discuss in our meeting. Yeah. Right. We all jointly made a couple little tweaks in the meeting and that was it. There was nothing later cut by me. It was, and I, I don't know if my finance director, I, I don't know if she has cut as early on in the process. <laughs> I don't have those notes. <laughs> I know it was $1,000 for the extra worker to right. do the files, but I don't remember what the other one was. I don't have that with me. 
for the overtime pay? We must, yeah, the other yes. one was in the overtime pay that we must have just discussed on how much oh, is really needed. Oh, the number of hours. Yeah, right, right. So number of hours for overtime. <laughs> yes. She just said the file, which was what I had said before, that I knew that was one. The other one was the overtime hours for our, our secretary in the office. Other questions? Are we ready to have a vote on this then, since I don't see any urgency? So we have a number on the board, 157,224. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. All right, the next account the next we're gonna take is 1,005 town clerk. Okay, and the number moved by the committee was $316,203. Are there any seconds? So, uh, is there any questions uh, or comments? Representative Marshall? Thank you, Madam Monitor. Um, I was wondering if the town clerk could give a brief synopsis of the revenue that, what types of revenue does the town clerk's office generate? Where do I start? From the biggest things that, that the, the large chunk of money comes in from conveyance <coughs> fees. So when, when a, a property is conveyed from one um, body to another, there is a conveyance fee that is paid to the state and, and to the town. So that's a large generation of money. Um, then and everything else is coming through um, copies. So uh, for a land record to be a dollar. Uh, for a vital record, so that'd be a marriage, birth, or uh, death record, those are $20 per copy. We accept cash or personal check for payment. Oh yeah, um, well, there's a bunch of different things, but maps, maps, if you have a, a varied sizes, either a $3 or a $5, if you want a mylar, it'll be 10. Um, those we make in-house, which uh, is handy, but it takes time. Um, Let's see. Um, dog licenses, we make a little bit of money on that. Um, fishing licenses, we make a dollar per transaction. Um, shellfish permits, we'd make 25 cents per transaction. Um, any other biggies? Mm, no. uh, liquor permits, we make uh, $2 on a transaction. Oh, adult entertainment, that's hundred. excuse me, $250 a year. <laughs> we, have two, we have two adult uh, um, ed, um, entertainment facilities in, in the town um, that, that they're very, very uh, prompt on, on uh, getting their permits. So. Uh, I don't mean to make light of it because it's, it's grandfathered in, so there's nothing you can do about it. Um, let's see, any other ones? It's hard to think of everything I go through. Mm, that's that's the majority. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the recording fees. So you have a $60 fee on each, uh, the first page, and then $5 for additional pages. And if your uh, your recording is through a MERS, which is a, a, a it's a it's a type of uh, company that is an electronic company that does the mortgages, and you you have a nominee as as the uh, as the state. So it's $159. Uh, flat fee for the for the first page, and then of course you'd have five dollars for every page after. So there is a different fee scale for MERS than there is for the re every day. So we get more every day than the MERS. So that's where your money comes. And my my budget is down um, to two point seven percent. 
um, this year, and that's due to um, uh, change in staffing. So we had high pay down to medium pay. Any other? So seeing no other hands raised, okay. Uh, let's see. <coughs> Representative Rogers. Um, Sorry, Rogers. Thank you, Madam Moderator. That's quite all right. Um, my question is very quick. I see that the, the big increase for this year was um, in cost center three, the vital statistics. And I was just wondering if you could tell us um, the backstory there. And then also in number six, um, the recording of legal documents, if you could give us the background on that increase as well. Are you looking at increase in revenues or increase in? Um, in the cost centers. Uh -huh. So, uh, oops. So, cost center three. Um, let me see where you're at. That's um, vital statistics. So that's people. That's you know. Um, that's a change in. It's a lower fee from forty-six thousand seven hundred sixty-six down to forty-five. 526. I'm not sure what the question is. No, it's 49. That was that was the original before we changed people. I'm yeah, I I'm seeing um, the request was for 49557. Legis no vital statistics. I'm sorry. And I'm seeing that the adjusted um, 2018 was 33901. Okay. So about a $16,000 jump. Yeah, it went from like 33 to 40. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That's probably. That's, I know that's an increase in, in postage for one piece of it, but I got to tell you exactly what it is. So we have um, and no overtime in that. We have a, a retro salary adjustment of $1,269,000. Oh, actually, it was 27516 but um, um, then we have postage. Yeah, that's an increase in postage for, um, for explanatory text will be in elections, not three. That's elections. That increase for elections is uh, the 24,000. From 4,000 to, to 24,000, so a 20,000 increases for explanatory text and postage for the. So it'll, we, we've estimated probably for the. Um, it'll be probably right around $12,000 for the print, and I'm guessing, I'm estimating 4,000, a little over 4,000 for postage. It's not really postage, I use an insert, but. It's cheaper than postage. That was for elections. Was that your question, Representative Rogers? Wasn't it? Elections. Was it recording legal documents? Um, it was the actually the, the vital statistics. Uh, yeah. Um, above that, the yeah one zero zero five three. Um, yeah, I figured the elections was related to. Okay, so we went from from thirty three thousand in adjusted. Let's say thirty thousand from last year to thirty to forty nine. Yeah, that's. Um, that's all employee um, change. That's an employee change. So we went from, I would, I've changed it from one person in one cost center to a different cost center. So it shifts. So if you look in leadership, you see a big change in uh, zero, zero, five, zero. Cost center, five, zero. I don't know, one, zero, zero, five, zero. You see the big change from 34. 107. So that, it's a person that's moved. R Representative Rogers, do you have want to follow up? Are you clear on that? Um, no, thank you. I'll I'll backtrack some of the uh, employee numbers. Thank you. I represent Powers. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, just for the town clerk. Um, how many employees do you have in your office? There are five, including me. How many people would you say goes through your office for documents, people that you would like service as a window, would you say? Uh, per day. Let's per just, day? Yeah. Per day, probably uh, 40 people per day. 
Right, times five days. So what would you figure? Somewhere between 40 or 50,000 people come into your office a year? Y yes. Yeah. With five people. No, it's, uh, that's just one side. Your side, your side is, we yeah. Have just in 50 re people. recording documents alone for our, a, a, a town our size is way, it's almost double of what another town our size has. So we compare ourselves to like Manchester and we're doing almost double the work. With half the staff, correct? Yeah. Right. Thank you. Any more questions? No? Okay. Are we ready for a vote then on uh, cost center 1005, which is the town clerk? We have a motion on the floor for 316,203. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Looks like the motion carries. All right, our next cost center is going to be uh, finance administration, and that is account 1013 on page 100. I've moved um, 1,464,000. Three, four, five, nope, let me take that back. I moved 1,465,313. Is there a second? Okay. Let me just write this up for us. A motion on the floor uh, for uh, town for rather uh, finance administration one million four hundred sixty five thousand three hundred and thirteen. Are there any questions or a representative Bordelon? Looking at the um, in the finance uh, department, how many staff are currently working in the finance department? Uh, I have nineteen. Nineteen. And is that, because I see there's been no cuts to this department and I have concerns about the number, is that for the population we serve, is that a, on the higher end of 19 personnel for one town in the finance office? Those are the questions that I'm looking at. I don't consider that to be a high number. In 17, um, we did take a hit to the budget, a 5% cut, and I was forced to lay off a person in the tax department. And we saw um, there were just no, there were not enough people left in that division to do the amount of work that was done, that needed to be doing, needed to be done. And last year in the 18 budget, I had asked that that position be restored because of the, we saw a significant reduction in back tax collections. And fortunately, I did get that position restored in 18. And the collections, the work that's been done in that division has shown that it has grown. The collections are um, warrant that that position was needed in that division. It just seems interesting that you'd cut that position that's supposed to be drawing in the, the tax money, so that would be a direct reflection. It would seem that that job should have been evenly distributed and compensated so that those revenues weren't lacking and that we weren't seeing those revenues come in. So I have concerns about that. But the number seems quite high to me. That's my question. So it was restored because you guys saw a decrease, but nobody, it didn't seem like it, uh, doesn't seem like it was absorbed properly was the problem. What should, wasn't What wasn't that absorbed? position was not absorbed properly? The, the the documents like the revenues weren't coming in because there wasn't anybody working those. Is that what you're saying? Right. There were not enough. Mm -hmm. There were just not enough people in the tax division to carry the load. And so you so, decided that. So it was decided that 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 position would then just be left and and then it, it not fully absorbed. I guess is I, I'm having trouble understanding because it sat and you restored it. Because right. When the position was laid off in the 17 budget, yeah. in that year, we saw the tax, back tax collections, which is a significant amount of work in um, the staff in that division. Mm -hmm. um, there were not enough people to maintain that constant due diligence to collect those back taxes, and we saw a drop in back tax revenue. Mm -hmm. When I restored the position in 18, we have seen a significant increase in back tax collections this year, because the work in that division has been able to be spread out among an additional person. When we were short a person, um, there were lines, that were, there were not enough people, they couldn't even answer the phones. The phones would ring continuously and it would go to voicemail and the taxpayers got very upset because we didn't have enough time to pick up the phone that was just ringing, let alone um, call back the people that had left a, a voicemail. 
but we did see a significant drop in that division. And I, I feel the position was, when I asked for the position back last year, that's what I said would happen, that we would see an increase in back tax collections, and it has proven that that is what happened in that division. Other questions? No, I guess we're ready for a vote then. So we have uh, one motion on the floor for account 1013 finance administration of $1,465,313. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? No, there's one not voting because it's not here right this second. We just took a we just took a vote. We voted on finance administration for the number on the board. Right, so Sounds like this uh, motion passes handily. Thirty-two and thirty-two in favor, one opposed. All right, thank you. So we're going to go to the next uh, item on our agenda for tonight, which is account 2120, the reevaluation fund, and that's on page 105. I move $88,800. Second. Okay, we have a motion on the floor and a second. Let me quickly write this up. Okay, so are there any uh, questions or, okay, Representative Chase? Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, can you explain what the 88800 is for if the revaluation isn't until 2021? You're correct. The next revaluation, full revaluation, will not be effective until October um, 2021. But in this fund, um, throughout the year, um, we have money in there for um, postage and printing. We started a new um, procedure this year where we're start co we are sending out mailers to all of the homeowners because it, the new the reval that's going to be in 2021 is called a full list and measure, which means every single house has to be touched. So we're trying to do that. The state allows you to do that by a data mailer system, and we're trying that this year. So we have some inform um, some money in there that's going to be uh, for postage, for printing, to buy the mailers. But the bulk of the money is for legal fees. Um, historically, when you have um, a revaluation, you have several lawsuits. And it, they usually continue for one to two years after the revaluation. So the bulk of the 88000 is to cover legal fees, although there is some in there for supplies and postage for the data mailing program. Representative Newsom. Yes, can you explain um, the payments from other funds and what other funds are, are paying in? Okay, the, the REVAL fund that was established in 1999 is funded by transfers of payments from the general fund, and that will be an, another account when we do contributions to other funds. That will be voted on, and, and that will be the money that comes into this fund to accumulate funds to pay for the 19 as well as to accumulate funds for the 2021 uh, revaluation. So this is the fund, the reval fund, where you're, um, you're voting on the expenditures that will be made next year. And the money that comes in to fund this fund will be under payments, uh, excuse me, uh, contributions to other fund 1077, which will be later on in the RTM meeting, meetings. Does that make sense? Representative Powers. Thank you, Madam Moderator. 
Could you explain the five year in comparison to the 10 year evaluation and how it impacts the overall budgets that we pass in our tax base, please? Right. Um, used to be the state mandated that you had revaluations every 10 years and, and several years ago, I'm not exactly sure when it went into effect, the state decided that we would be mandatory five year revaluations because there was such a swing or could be such a swing in values between in a 10 year value. So the town created this fund um, in 1999 and we added the aerial mapping in 2005 so that we wouldn't see those huge spikes either every 10 years or every five years. We gradually put money away um, so that when it's time to actually do the revaluations we have the funds available and we don't have to ask for it in a single year or the year before it's due. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Are there any other questions before uh, Representative Whitehouse? Did we uh, fund this last year? Because it looks like the balance didn't increase much. Uh, last we year. did ask last year. It did take a significant cut during the budget process. If you look at um, on page 105, that's like a running total. I find I I run to try to make sure that we're accumulating enough funds so that when the reval or the mapping is due, and you'll see that it was a very um, small amount that was appropriated last year. It was cut twice. And at that time, I said that it was going to cause us to have to increase the, the contributions in the future years so that we would have sufficient balance available to cover what's anticipated to be like $450,000 we'll need in 2021. Okay. So we probably should have put more in last year, and now we have to put it in now so we're not behind yeah. further. And again, that, that'll be when we do contributions to other funds. Right now, we're just doing the expenditure side of the 88.8. Okay. But I, yes, the contribution is, uh, it was 87.5 last year, and I'm asking for 225 this year. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Uh, Representative Newsom. You said the bulk of the 88,000 is for legal expenses. What other expenses are there? And is, is any of that work done by the town attorneys, yes. these lawsuits? Yes, it is handled by the town attorneys, unless there's a conflict. But most of the rebound lawsuits are handled by the town attorneys. Thank you. Any other questions? No? All right, seeing none, I think we're ready to go to a vote on uh, account number 2120, the revaluation fund. And we have a number on the table, which is 88,800, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Looks like it carries. The next uh, one we're, account we're gonna look at is uh, account 2060, Mumford Cove, uh, rather uh, 1076 debt service, excuse me. And that's on page 206. I make a motion to uh, move Five million two hundred sixty-two thousand three hundred twenty-eight dollars. Second. Oh, can I take that down? Yes. Okay. I make a motion to move five. And we have to have the seconder accept that, I guess. What? She she moved the wrong number from it, and it was seconded. Taking that back? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. $5,266,790. I apologize. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's 1076. Yeah. Service. Yeah. Service. Yeah. Service. Yeah. Service. Yeah. Service. Yeah. Service. All right, sorry, it's getting, we need some spritz here <laughs> between this board. Um, so we have a number on the floor, uh, which was adjusted from the number that the town council voted on due to uh, more clarity over costs, and that number's $5,266,790. Are there any questions on this? Representative Richards. Um, 
Um, could you explain why you requested the addition to the town council from the town manager's number? Sure. Um, when we put together the budget, we had anticipated, or uh, our, our bond, our financial advisor had estimated the amount of principal and interest that would be due for the bond sale that we just had at the end of March. And so, actually, when we sold the bonds and the principal and interest payments were the actual principal and interest payments for the 6.6 .6 million came in a little bit higher, and that was an additional 4,462 dollars. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, seeing no questions, no other hands in the air, we, I think we're ready for a, a vote. So we have uh, count 1076, debt service, and we have a motion on the floor for $5,266,790. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Uh, the next item on our agenda is account 2060, Mumford Cove. I moved $21,043. Second. Okay. Once again, this is the contract um, between the Mumford Cove Association and the Knowing Fire District for fire protection. So they pay the town whatever <laughs> taxes they collect for fire protection for Knowing Fire District. All right, so I'm back. I'm back. Representative Marshall. Thank you. Uh, quick question. If the costs come in higher for services in the year, for the year rendered, does that, the Mumford Code Association would be, would be owe that money to the town, correct? Well, um, well, they contract, the $20,000 is a flat fee that Mumford Cove charges them, mm -hmm. and the only other cost is for tax collection services. Okay. So we don't expect that it to, it, there would be an increase in the budget. Okay, and if, do we pay, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know this, um, do we pay, is it a volunteer fire department, or is it, do we pay their services for their time? And well, they contract with the Noack Fire District. Yeah, you know, I know, the Noack Fire District, where is that, that's covered elsewhere? It's operating expenses? Well, that's not part of our budget. The knowing that's their knowing fire has their right has their own budget. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or no? Are we ready for a vote on this one then, guys? Are, we have we have some uh, treats that District One and the the clerk has brought have brought in today, so we <laughs> we can adjourn quickly, um, but I think we should plow through. <laughs> so. We have a motion on the floor for account 2060. Uh, that's Mumford Cove Fire District, uh, $21,043. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. The problem with following through is. I didn't say we were going to I said we were going to go up dessert. No, I went through for this. So the next account is 4010, the Groton Sewer District, and that's on page 195. I move $803,445. Okay. We have a number on the floor, which is for the Groton Sewer District account 4010, 803,445. Are there any questions? Representative Marshall. Thank you, Ed, a quick question. Um, the FY17 actual and adjusted 2018, the, the difference there, uh, both those are higher than what we're looking to request for this year. Um, could you elaborate on what that entails? 
Um, this is debt, uh, the sewer district is primarily a debt service fund. So as time goes by, the debt, the, actually it's clean water fund. We have two clean water fund loans. And as those pays, as the payments goes down, the outstanding debt goes down. Okay. So the debt payments would go down. Any other questions? No. Okay. So are we ready for a vote on this? So here we have a motion on the floor for account 4010, which is um, the Groton Sewer District, and we have a motion for 803,445. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? No. Motion carries. So we're, this is the end of our agenda. However, it's not the end of our meeting. Um, so I would entertain a motion to recess. Um, but I would ask you also to uh, stick around and, and enjoy some um, refreshments at District 1 and the moderator, uh, the clerk brought. So is there such a motion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Abstentions? All right, I'll see you next Thursday.